So hang on today, guys. We got a pretty full show, and this is going to be a two-parter, but don't worry about waiting for the second part to come out because I'm going to release them one day, and then the very next day, tomorrow, you'll be able to see the next part to this series. And we're going to completely transform this garage or outbuilding, it doesn't make a difference, with metal siding. Frankie's been installing this stuff for 30 plus years, and he's going to share with you his tips and tricks and things to watch out for, common beginner mistakes and red flags. So without wasting any more time, let's get into today's video. So what are we looking at, Frankie? Well, the, the plywood's only got the corners, corners wrapped in plywood. The rest of it's felt board. They went with built right, right? Built right, yep. Yeah. So obviously we can't screw to this. Okay. So I kept this up underneath because it's underneath there. So when you say obviously, I just want to point out why you say obviously, Frankie. Well, because nothing would ever stick to it. It's a felt. You know, I mean, so no, why no do they screws. why do they even use this? Because some of these guys, when they're going to well, go reside their house, may run into this stuff. Because if we were putting on uh, siding, if we were going long ways, then we screw into the studs. Okay. We're standing our tin upright, so, so we're not going to be in the into the studs every time. Okay, so we're doing something a little different, you guys. So we're actually going straight up and down with our tin. But let's explain to them why we're doing that, Frankie. Because maybe because uh, they're maybe used to seeing siding going sideways yep. yeah but well like this the siding was going sideways too but if, if you run your tin sideways with the humps in it the humps always get dirty there'll always be dirt on you know and it catches little bits of water and it's just kind of nasty yeah it just run, way, it's, yep. we're running our metal siding straight up and down and if you look at most big buildings or stuff like that that's the way they usually run yeah just because um so a now, stick building okay um a stick building they will run a long way to siding but it's it's your preference what you want to how you want to look so at it can it. be run either way we're, we're be, just yeah. explaining why we're doing what we're doing and letting you guys do whatever you guys want to do now you guys when you pull your siding off you may find built right on your buildings don't panic you don't have to go out and replace all of it nope. with plywood there's a reason why you can use this i don't like it i, I don't like it i wouldn't put it up so if like we were going to end up redoing it or if any of these sheets weren't in good shape, it would be plywood. Yep. It would be, we'd never touch this stuff. Right. So what's next, Frankie? Okay, what do you then with the, once I got this tore off, I left this underneath because it's behind the soffit already. So I'll screw this tight to every stud. In fact, I did down here. I just, you know, I screwed it off. Okay. Okay, then every... Two feet. I'm gonna run another board, uh, masonite board across. So I'll screw my tin off at every two feet. So I'll, I'm gonna use this masonite siding as a nailer. Okay. So you're gonna reuse some of the siding just to help yep. set your lines up. Yep. And if then I once I put right. them, once I put them back on here, I'm gonna wrap it with house wrap. House wrap. Because of the tin creating condensation behind it, I don't want the felt board to get wet. So that's a that's a great point so frankie you just kind of glossed over the tin creating condensation but hot cold think of like a glass of cold water yep. right and it'll just start to sweat and condensate tin does the same thing yep. especially when you have you know we'll wake up in the morning it'll be 40 degrees and by afternoon it'll be 80 degrees that tin's going to attract the moisture and we're in a highly humid climate in the first place and then being on in the back side of it you know on the back side of the tin which really uh the sweat is going to be and once that starts running you know mm -hmm. down well we don't want our felt board to get wet yep and that will that would wreck the felt that, board yep that yep. would wreck the felt board so house wrap is mandatory i mean some of you guys may go well yeah everybody applies house wrap well no because like where we're at there's no building codes right except there's an electrical code and then there's uh you can't have too many buildings on a lot code 
but there's zero building code and there's going to be other areas of the country where there's zero building code so we're going to talk about common sense type of stuff right yep. really that's what it boils down to so and it makes it easier for me now because i don't have to cut this out you know and, and we have to put a nailer up no matter what just because we're running our tin up and down. what about the corners there was something you wanted to explain to me about or show me on the corners. well thinking. not so much on the court well see the corners will have the plywood but why I'm putting the nailers on is because you know if this was my tin mm -hmm. you know if I would happen to say if I would screw here see I would buckle my tin because it ain't flat that's why I like to take the siding off you know and I put tin on just because of the flat you know it ain't flat it, it is flat but oh, are you if you screw here now with your tin are you saying there maybe guys just tinning over the top of existing siding people do that yeah okay you can do that but I don't like doing that because if you don't hit that just right, you know, you, you got to be right on all the way and you hope the siding doesn't So if you put the screw here, you're going to buckle your tin. You're going to yep. get this weird indent here. So you'd have to hit right here. So if you're going over existing lap siding, yep. you better mark off where that the lap yeah, is. Make sure your, your siding is, is uh, level. Okay. Any other um, pointers for these guys, um, Frankie? Well, I'm not going to put... Uh, brick molding back on I'm gonna wrap everything with J J channel metal so there would be basically maintenance free won't be no more no more wood showing basically anywhere but the window the window okay. will be the only spot where there'll be wood showing okay otherwise no just tear it down tear it off and and put some back on but and keep wasp spray with you yeah yeah it ain't too bad here though up here down there we sprayed wasps um, behind the boat so we've always yeah. well, I reason I say that actually not facetiously because there's a lot of times wasps will burrow underneath the ground or burrow around and when you go to pull that off yep. just there. get ready and I'm sure some of you guys have done it and experienced what it's like to get attacked by a swarm of wasps put your comments down below where did you what's the most weird place you've ever found wasps I found them we had a light right on the corner right here Frankie and it was on the other yeah. side yeah. and um the the they made a, a nest inside the entire <laughs> light and i i went out because i mean this is an, obviously a great idea why not take um a jumpsuit right yeah. and i taped up the cuffs and, and i put on a i put on a, a motorcycle helmet and i flipped that down taped all the way around and I'm like nothing can get me I'm just gonna go out there with a blowtorch and a tennis racket and have some fun except for the fact that I forgot that the crotch was totally ripped out <laughs> of the jumpsuit like wide open and I'm swinging and I'm having fun I'm bashing wasps and pretty soon I'm like ow ah. I found the open. oh my god 17 stings right inside my inner thighs I'm wow. running and screaming and they're just <sighs> I going right to town oh and they weren't the little tiny ones either they were the, the mean wasp, the wasp suckers that just keep biting over and over they <laughs> <laughs> So everything that comes off will actually be saved and some of it will be reused and we're going to talk about why we do that in just a moment okay as you can see i got that side done the camera screwed up on me yesterday so you didn't get me see me finish it but i will do the same thing here on this side and all the way around and what I'm doing, I'm putting up nailers. That is what I'm gonna be screwing my tin to. I'm just kind of getting everything ready today because the tin's showing up tomorrow. So here we go for another day. Now I understand reusing the siding as backer board is a little bit different, but there is two reasons why we're doing it this way. One of them you probably can relate with, but the second one you probably, most of you don't have any clue about. The first reason we're reusing them is just simply logistics. The closest Menards, Home Depot, or Lowe's is over 50 miles away, so it's not easy to get to. 
But the second reason is because when we were growing up, we didn't have money and we didn't have resources. And every time we did anything, we were taught to reuse and repurpose as much material as we possibly could. And that's still with me to this very day. So when I look at things at resources, I look at it a little bit differently and I can't change that even for a video. So in this case, if you guys have access to getting back or board, go for it. You don't have to reuse your siding. It's just the, what we're doing on this job site because it's the way we were born. So as Frankie is going to be nailing up the tin, he's going to be using these strips as his backer board, meaning his screw holes will line up with where this siding is. So he's going to make sure that he marks it off and knows exactly where all of that is. And we're going to show you how he does that coming up. All right, you guys, so all of the siding's off, and now Frankie's got all the J-channel on? Or the three sides, I do. Okay, so let's show, let's just walk through step-by-step step what is J-channel. J-channel, that's just, just a J-channel. Basically, it is, if you look on this side of it, you can see it's actually just a J-channel, and it's for weather and whatever. So the J-channel, if we look real close, it comes up, over, and then back down. So let's take a look at this J channel before he gets the whole thing closed up. That way you guys can see it a little bit better. What it looks like. And what that does is that keeps, in this case it's going to be doing a different function, but if you had this exposed it keeps the water from getting behind the siding. So you couldn't just flat flush this up onto the right. top. Plus it gives you like a trim look too, you know, it's actually trimmed out. So yeah, and then great point, because if you don't get all of your cuts identical up in this corner, it's a way of hiding it. Yep. So it's just like a trim board, really. So it's yep. a functional trim board and it helps with weatherproofing. And if we wanted to, we could do the same to the bottom to help, you know, whatever, but we're not gonna in this case. But you wouldn't put a J channel on the we're bottom. And drill holes, just for, just reason. Oh, so for looks, so you. Yeah. It's for looks. Great point, Frankie, because if you put a J-channel on the bottom to hide it as a trim board, you've got to drill holes into the bottom of the J-channel to allow the water to go through it. And you know what? Not everybody knows that. A lot of you guys are like, oh, that's beginner stuff. Well, great for you, because not everybody knows that. Right. So um, we're going to start hanging this. Now, you ordered all this. You measured up, uh, you measured it all up, and then yep. you ordered it pre-cut to the right size, right? Yeah, except for our gable ends won't be cut, but we'll have to cut them. And then this, your, your uh, grade difference here, you know, I didn't, you know, they didn't cut them. They just, I just, I got the measured, the full measured cuts, and then I'll have to do the angle cuts. Myself. Right. So, but for some of these guys. So, yeah, pre I, I ordered it all pre-cut pre-cut and so you guys can do that and that basically means it's going to save you a lot of time yep. and hassle as long and as you no, it doesn't cost you no more no less you know just it, it's same price same you just go with the footage they just charge you footage yep so it actually might save you money then yeah because you're going to be no not enough not, not, not wasting not wasting time either not wasting material and or not time. wasting time So Frankie's measuring down 66 inches right now so that we can get all how many inches? 66 three quarters. 66 and three quarters? Yeah. Okay. And that's where our screws go. So that way we're getting them dead on. Otherwise we're gonna do a snap line it when we get done. So then we're gonna get them that way we'll get that them two rows dead straight, you know. We'll okay. Swing line. Snap line it. Snap line, yeah, chop box. Okay. So your screws will match the color of your siding. And you also want to make sure that you get a screw that's like this because it's got this little washer on it. And that's important because that creates the watertight seal when you stick it up onto the uh, building. Okay, so what do you got there, Frankie? It's just to keep bugs from crawling up behind the tin. And, and Can you whatever. show us how these things go in place? Well, we're gonna, well, they'll be just like so. Here, I'll show you right here. So this keeps the bugs from going, getting behind and making nests. They'll sit, they'll sit right in the, in the tin like, like so. You know, but down on the bottom, I'll put one down, I'll put one, so I'll see that one started. You can actually see that they're 
indented and grooved to match the grooves in the tin. Yep. You put one on top and one on bottom, nope. Frankie? This is the bottom. There's no way they can get in there. From the top? Yeah. Spiders. Yeah, they still, I got, a very, I got pretty much tight to that J-channel, top. I don't think they're going to get in there. So, the, so this is the gap that Frankie's betting that the bugs won't get in. But they will get in from the bottom because they'll have more time. Because the holes are open, you know? Yeah. So So you lift up the corner, slide it in. It's got self, it's got adhesive on it, so yeah. it'll stick to the. So don't stretch it as you're putting it on. You know, just put it on. Just lay it in place. Yep. Okay. And when we put this piece on, it'll it'll fit right in groove. It'll fit it, right in. It'll grooves. fit right in the grooves. Yep. Because. Okay. So what's that tip, Frankie? See, because of our when you when you put the tin on, this this little rib here, that's our overlap side. Because that's if water gets up behind there and starts to go up, it'll fall in this channel and, and run down. See, the overlap side doesn't have that. So you can see the difference. This is the overlap side. This is the overlap side. Right. Right. This is the side that you overlap. Yep, yep. Yep. And you want to keep that when you're putting it up. You want to make sure this one always stays tight. You know, you want to keep that one tight to the air because then it falls right into place, see? If you don't, you can be off. See, then it can go off like that or off like this or... You know. So you got to be real tight yeah, with this not, overlap yep, one yep. because that sets the rest of the panel. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we've got a lot more video and knowledge coming to you right directly from Frankie's skull itself. So in the next part of this series, it's going to be coming out tomorrow. You're going to see us actually take this building from this point all the way to completion, including how to install J channel, how to install corner trim how to run the speed square, and a whole lot more. So make sure you guys subscribe, stick around, and uh, check out the other two videos I'm putting up here on the screens for you. God bless. Go get them, you guys.